Consider this wall the evolution of an idea, an inventor's showcase with space to spare. Our learning is in the doing. Shane Farreter, an engineering professor with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, has been building and researching small robots for surgery for the last 20 years. And since our robots are small, uh, they have this advantage that they could be used in you know, remote locations. So the first thing I think of is rural places in Nebraska that uh, there's a lot more hospitals than there are surgeons. A UNMC surgeon provided the medical know-how. Together they created the startup, Virtual Incision. We're kind of a special group that we really f build things and test things, and we build things and test things. And that's really the only way we get smarter around here. Here is some of the doing. This surgical robot is built to remove sections of colon. Because the incision is so small, the patient can recover in days, rather than months with typical open surgery. While the operator is in the same room with the robot in this simulation, they could be in different hemispheres. So you'll see we've designed a control panel. Rachel um, Wagner is a UNL PhD it. student. Um, so crew, this box uh, and what's in it is her thesis. The exciting part is that the astronauts will flip the switch over and then we'll actually connect to the robot from Earth. This is the first uh, surgical robot that will fly in space. A surgeon in Lincoln will operate the robot on the International right Space here, Station. Um, where the surgeon will cut simulated tissue. Pushing the boundaries of what's possible. As humans are going farther into space, you know, maybe we're going to have a lunar space station or go to Mars. The health of the astronauts is going to end up being very important. It's not easy to just come back to Earth for certain things. And eventually, we think a device like ours uh, might add to those missions. At some point in the next couple of months, Lincoln, Nebraska will be, for a moment, ground control for NASA. We've been trained uh, to talk on the astronaut communications channels. It's one of those experiments that didn't seem possible decades ago. We received grants from the Army and from NASA. Both of those places, those institutions want to do surgery in far off crazy places. A surgical robot operating in zero gravity. How will that be commemorated on the wall? On your side in Lincoln, Brian Mastery, 6 News. A successful liftoff this morning at Cape Canaveral, Florida. There are 3,000 pounds of scientific experiments on board, headed for the 11 astronauts on the International Space Station. Pretty exciting, I have to say. It was pretty fun. It was perfect launch, perfect day. I'm very happy Mira's on its way up to the space station. One of the 20 experiments roaring through space right now is a surgical robot, the first to be tested at the space station. It's in a box about the size of a microwave and invented at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. It was packed on the cargo ship similar to this. We're simply mesmerized by that great video of the first stage landing. Our learning is in the doing. UNL engineering professor Shane Farreter has been working on a space-worthy version of the surgical robot for two years. When it comes time to test, a surgeon in Lincoln will head to the headquarters of Virtual Incision in Lincoln to control the robot 250 miles above Earth. Inside the experiment locker, the left arm grasps. The right cuts what is a simulated surgical tissue. Of course, there will be time delays between ground and space. Plus, how will microgravity affect the experiment and the surgeon? Encouraging results could pave the way for surgery anywhere and a surgeon somewhere else. We're just showing what's possible, but what I'm really excited about and what I think the university is really contributing to is the ability to do surgery from a distance, remote surgery and telesurgery. There's so many rural hospitals and critical access, access hospitals where there may not be a specialist. And if you could have someone dial in and help with the surgery, that could bring people better care. Rachel Wagner is a Ph.D. student at UNL. Her thesis is on the surgical robot in space. I asked her if today was full of note-taking. <laughs> um, I really tried to let loose today and only focus on my excitement for the launch and not be nervous for, you know, when, when the robot's going to do its thing. Before the experiment can even happen, the ship needs to arrive at the space station. That doesn't happen until Thursday morning. Wrap your mind around this. 
This box the size of a microwave with a robotic science experiment inside was assembled in Lincoln through a partnership with the University of Nebraska and Virtual Incision Two, one. and sent to the astronauts last month on the International Space Station. The idea seems simple. Use the robotic arm to cut simulated tissue. Here's the big deal. The first surgeon is using the hand and foot controls in Lincoln to control the grasping and cutting. Don't forget, the surgery is in space. You did pick the hardest one to cut. <laughs> Today's surgical robots typically take up an entire room. Space Mira is two and a half feet long and weighs two pounds. A small rubber band, <laughs> but a great leap for surgery. Yeah. This is the first step towards longer space flights, so astronauts could have an option in case of an emergency. It also opens the door to surgeries in hard-to-reach places, such as rural America.